regreso aquí en Auto 060 y bueno, después de las novedades en el Auto Show de Ginebra y de hablar de estas tecnologías que ahora están disponibles en los autos, principalmente los de GM, como nos estaban hablando ahí James Bell y um, Jody Mateo, we're going to switch back to English because we're going to talk to one engineer from GM, Tony Argote, uh, who is a technical specialist in, cha in charge of charging controls. How are you, Tony? Good, good morning. Thanks for having me. No, thank you very much. And uh, I understand that this month is uh, like a national celebration of uh, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, right? Yes, and, and really, it's always a celebration of, of science, technology, and engineering, and mathematics at General Motors. It's something that we're uh, we're very excited to be a part of. Yeah, uh, I have to admit, I was really bad at science, technology. I never did engineering and mathematics. <laughs> I was more into I was more into letters, creativity, like drawing and geography, history, but mathematics was not has never been my strength. So obviously in car manufacturing is like key, right? Oh yeah, of course. And and, and don't feel too bad. I mean I, math is something that I struggled with all the time, but it was just about perseverance. Yeah. But I guess uh, it's like something, I guess like sports, no? Like, I mean, you have that from, from like whatever you are wired in your brain, you are like moved to that, uh, to that uh, field of, of studies, no? I mean, like from you were a kid, probably you were already adding numbers or something. Well, we, uh, we did a bunch of stuff, karate, baseball, you name it. But I think really it was the teachers that, that I had that inspired me to actually Um, get involved in, in mathematics and science and, and to see the cool side of building stuff with your hands. I mean, it's not uncommon for, for kids to play with Legos and cars, but then when you think about you can actually do that for real when you grow up, that, that kind of got exciting. Yeah, I think you hit the, the note with the word cool. Because most people, yeah. especially kids, don't don't like relate cool to science, technology and mathematics. I mean most people oh, are yeah. like, What what is this for? Yeah, yeah, you you know, you get the idea of the, the mad scientist with the lab coat and the poofy hair, and, and we've got a couple of those folks, but, you know, really it's, it's a little bit more down to earth, and it's just about making the principles of, of mass and engineering applicable. Um, you know, working on charging on the volt, it, it's actually something that we're trying to make very usable, and that we, we focus on making sure that people can understand it. Yeah. So um, it, it, it really all goes back to when we were growing up, You know, when you get your first lesson on, like, electricity or motion, you, have, you keep that stuff. And you see, you find what's exciting about it, and you hold on to it, and you, you grow it through college, and you can have a career in it. Yeah, and I guess now with the special technology, I mean, we're talking about that, like, I, I'm referring to iPads and, like, things that you can really see things almost happening in, in the process of being made. Uh, is that easier to learn, do you think, or it's a uh, watch... Uh, I mean, you you referred to the teachers before, so is now easier to get into this field or more difficult? What do you think? I think I think it's um, I think it's different. Um, to say it's easier or harder is is I'd have to be a teacher to, to answer that. But what I've seen in volunteering in my classroom is um, the opportunity to interact and to learn quickly with newer technology has just skyrocketed. And when you look at some of the things that, that kids are doing in classrooms today with iPads and, and even with video chatting and stuff, um, it's, it's amazing. I, I look back on that, and it's the same thing my parents told me growing up. I didn't have that when I was growing up. Yeah. So I, I, I'm kind of excited for what the next generation is going to come up with because they're playing with stuff at, at you know the kindergarten and, and first and second and third grade level that I only had access to in college. Yeah. Okay, can uh, we go back and, and, and tell us about it? How did you get into GM? Uh, did they recruit you? Did you look for the job? How, how did that happen? Yeah, so um, originally I'm from Miami, Florida. Um, oh, you're from Miami? Generation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I mean, first generation I... Cuban American. And um, uh, when I graduated from high school, I had the, the good opportunity to uh, attend and study at the Georgia Institute of Technology. And through the, uh, the General Motors recruiting team at Georgia Tech, um, I've, I've had a series of internships or co-ops um, that helped me kind of pay for college and get experience while I was, while I was at school. Um, and through that relationship, uh, when I graduated, I, I was extended a job office with General Motors, and it was to work on this, this crazy program called The Volt. 
<laughs> and I've only heard how cool it would be to work on, you know, the electric vehicle that has a gas engine and can get 40 miles of range. Um, so I said yes right away. And uh, that's, that's a quick version of how I made it to GM. Yeah, that's great. So, for example, if you were going to give any advice to, to kids who are, uh, I guess, getting in already or maybe already in college, I mean, like, how do they they approach companies or how does that work? I mean, like, they have to be very proactive. Do they have to look for things or, like, there's help from the schools? How do they um, be proactive to get to that level? Right. Um, uh, be hungry. You know, you, if you want it, go get it. I, I think that's one of the, the things I got from my parents, um, you know, being immigrants. Is every, day is a, every day is a blessing and it's an opportunity. And um, when I was at Georgia Tech, I wanted to take full advantage of that. So when I saw GM at the career fair and they were recruiting sophomores, I said, I'm a freshman. I promise you I'm going to get the GPA. I promise you I will uh, I will impress you guys. And I think they were, they were impressed right off the bat. So be bold enough to go forward and, and, and get what you want. Yeah. And uh, some people complain that there's no opportunities and, and like the economy, the recession. I mean, there's always excuses. But like you're saying, if you want it, you work for it. And like, I mean, you're an example of that, like the hard work and you like realize your dream. It, it, it's funny to think of it that way. But yeah, you're right. I, I do a fair amount of recruiting now for General Motors. And you, you can just see when somebody comes up and they're they're so excited about the product and about the, the discipline and the engineering and the opportunity to make a difference. I mean, but I think it's kind of uh, it, it's kind of uh, a big responsibility and also an incredible opportunity to be working on products that are sold all around the world. Yeah. And so that shows when you're when you're at a career fair and, and you're going forward and you've got that passion to work on something big. Yeah. And companies uh, of uh, like General Motors obviously are very very proactive in like looking for the best talent, obviously because they want to be number one at everything. And like recruiting is like the key part of that, right? Because I mean, the cars are amazing, and once people get them, uh, they just like probably don't think too much about people like you who help them create them. It, it's uh, it's funny because my 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 family, um, you know, working at General Motors, they've they've seen all of the the intensity of launching a product, and we have you know here one of our our vision is to to sell you know design, build, and sell the world's best vehicles, right? And that means having the best people. And so the recruitment process is important. The work you put in every day is important. And ultimately, it shows in our product. Yeah. And then people pr press a button and, like, the car turns on, the radio goes on, the AC goes on, and everything is perfect. There's, like, yeah. a lot of work behind that, right? Yeah. Well, then in my world, you plug in and the light goes green and it starts charging, and it's, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so you work on the ball from the, I guess, from the beginning of that program? Yeah, um, uh, very close to the start of the program, I hired in, and um, I was responsible for for the charging hardware for the part, for the car. Yeah, and it was what a cool opportunity because you know we, we hadn't really released that before. Um, the, the charging interface is kind of like where your car and your cell phone start to merge, right? You plug in your cell phone every night. Well, now we're trying to make it so you plug in the car every night. Yeah, it's pretty amazing because like the Bolt was the first of its kind in the industry. I mean, like at least in a, in like a big. Uh, mass produce uh, vehicle, uh, electric vehicle, and some people say, well, it's not a hybrid, it's not an electric because it has the engine and all that. But like the first application of that kind of thing, it's pretty amazing. And uh, I understand, yeah. I remember when they were presenting it, they were saying like, the Bolt has like 20 times, or I don't remember the number, more computing capability like the uh, Apollo 13 that landed on the moon or something like that. Yeah, we were pretty excited about it. And, and even, you know, the Volt's been an incredible example when we go forward and do, like, STEM volunteer work. Students connect with it. You know, classrooms, teachers, they're, they're just they're thrilled by it. Every time I take, you know, Volt to a classroom, it's so easy to just talk about the product and have the kids get excited or the students get excited because it's just it's pure technology. You know, it, it's, it's amazing, it's groundbreaking, and it's the sort of stuff that, going back to what we were talking about earlier, gets you excited, you know, makes engineering cool. Yeah. And uh, so the Bolt, I mean, it has really, I mean, all the Bolt and all the other EV cars, electronic uh, vehicles have, like, really revolutionized the industry. And, like, I mean, I know you cannot tell me what you're working on, but, like, as an engineer, what do you see in the future, like, in one minute, if you can tell me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, there's only so much I can tell you, but I, I really, I really see, um, I, I really see 
electric vehicles being adopted and as as a part of life. I, I currently own a Volt now, and it took me a little while to get one, but um, it's just been amazing how it's changed my life. And my wife and, and our family, everybody's always had something to say about it, whether it's you only pay that much for gas every couple months or, you know, wow, this has a completely different feel. Um, it, it, it's something to talk about. It's something to enjoy. And, you know, like with the Spark EV and now the ELR, like we're just seeing more and more examples of how amazing electrified vehicles can be. Yeah, it's incredible. We're talking to Tony Argote, who is a General Motors Technical Specialist in charge of uh, charging controls for uh, for their cars. And Tony, uh, finally, is there any web page or something where people can learn more about STEM and uh, General Motors and like these recruiting programs? Yeah, we um, at the uh, at uh, dm dot com. Uh, you're going to find a bunch of different links, not just to our vehicles, but also to our community efforts. Um, and you can also look up the General Motors Foundation. Between those two sites, you're going to find a wealth of information on, on our efforts and our vehicles. Excellent. Well, Tony, thank you very much. I know you're uh, from Miami, but you're in Detroit now, so I'm not going to talk about the weather, okay? So not to make you feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, Tony, Tony, I got it uh, from General Motors. Thank you very much. Esto es Alto 060, yo soy Javier Mota y ya regresamos aquí con uh, Cristina Radio Network.